Well, hello everyone and happy FreeBSD Day Eve. I am Deb Goodkin, the Executive Director of the FreeBSD Foundation. So tomorrow is FreeBSD's 28th birthday and we're starting our celebrations early. We'll be posting uh, different ways to celebrate on social media and we'll also post a link to some of those resources in the chat window here. So last year we kicked off a series of 15 introductory uh, introductory to previous e-talks and all those recordings are available on our website and we will also post the link to those there. Um, if you have a question during today's talk, you can post it in the chat window and but uh, please proceed it by a queue so we know it's a question. Also, if you didn't know, last week we had a developer summit and well, it was actually a virtual uh, FreeBSD developer summit. And we had over 260 attendees. I think that was the largest developer summit ever. Um, all the sessions were recorded and you'll be able to access links to the recordings for each individual day in the chat channel here too. Uh, we'll have uh, individual talk recordings available sometime next week. So today our presentation is how to submit a patch by Drew Yurkowski and Ed Mast. So first, let me tell you a little bit about Drew and Ed. So Drew started working for the foundation as an intern in 2015 and continued as a contractor starting in 2018. He's the person behind our how-to guides and videos and also contributes as our marketing coordinator. He graduated from the Boston Conservatory with a degree in musical theater and continues to perform and direct in New York City. Ed, is the Senior Director of the FreeBSD Foundation's Technology Group. He has been a FreeBSD committer since 2005 and worked in industry supporting FreeBSD and commercial products prior to joining the foundation. He manages the foundation's development staff and project grant recipients and has recently contributed hands-on to updating components of FreeBSD's tool chain. Ed resides in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, and is looking forward to his upcoming backcountry camping trip and being able to finally meet FreeBC contributors in person again. So now I'll hand this off to Drew and Ed. Awesome. Thank you so much. So today we're going to be talking about how to contribute to FreeBSD as a programmer and uh, specifically in regards to how to submit a patch. So as you probably know, FreeBSD relies on the continuous contributions from its user base to survive. And becoming involved is actually really super simple. Um, and there's always a wide variety of tasks that people can contribute to at various levels of difficulty and technical expertise. Um, FreeBSD has a large number of international contributors and always welcomes help from committers of various ages and areas of technical expertise. It's one of the things that makes FreeBSD really wonderful is how diverse the group of committers is. Um, but even then, there's always more work than there are people available to do it. So if you ever want to help, your help is appreciated no matter what. Um, whether it's on the base system, whether it's part of ports, or even uh, documentation. So the FreeBSD project is responsible for the entirety of the FreeBSD operating system. And this means that there's always a wide uh, range of to-do tasks. So I'm actually going to start sharing my screen right here. On the FreeBSD Foundation website, all the links that um, I go to during this uh, talk are going to be shared in the live chat as well. So on the FreeBSD Foundation, we have a guide on submitting documentation. And it currently needs to be updated with FreeBSD's new documentation tools. But this could be a good idea to glance over. Um, documentation is always really helpful. Um, even though we won't be covering it in depth today, um, we're going to be focusing mostly on how to submit a patch. But submitting documentation, updating out of date, or potentially incorrect documentation is always welcome and very helpful. All right, so today we're going to be focusing on how a programmer could contribute uh, to the project with so many patches. And the first step is to find an ongoing programmer task that you can help with. 
Um, the first place that I'm going to talk about that you can find ongoing programmer tasks is the FreeBSD problem report or PR mailing list. So if you go to the link um, also in chat, this is going to guide you to where you can subscribe to the FreeBSD bugs mailing list. Um, you can subscribe and unsubscribe here. This is great because on the mailing list, you can comment constructively on any discussion that's currently ongoing, um, any current issues. And if you actually see one that you think that you could help with, you could try to fix one of the problems that's being discussed yourself and submit it as a patch. Um, I'm also going to talk about another way that you can help. Um, and this is more if you have a ton of free time to assist the project. Um, if you want to get a copy of a formal standard uh, like POSIX, you can compare FreeBSD's behavior to it. This is a great way to identify places that um, FreeBSD could use enhancement or potentially find a bug. Um, and if you find it, find a solution, you can submit that as a patch as well. Um, I'm also going to bring up Bugzilla, as this is probably the largest source of PRs, problem reports. Um, and it's a great place to find open tasks. So if you go to FreeBSD Bugzilla, um, you're going to go to the search and make sure that you're looking at the open um, problem reports. When you hit search, you're going to be presented with a massive list of all ongoing tasks here. These, um, it's going to contain all active programmer and non-programmer tasks. So you can go through the open problem reports and just see if anything takes your interest here. Um, these can range from just simple code reviews to much more complex requests that might take a lot of time. You're going to want to start with um, open reports that haven't been assigned to anyone. You can see under assignee, if it says bugs at freebsd.org, this means it hasn't been assigned to anyone, as opposed to one that has been assigned, the person's email will be provided. Um, if you see a problem report that you think you can assist with, but it's already been assigned to someone, feel free to email them. I wouldn't suggest emailing them out of the blue and asking to take over, but checking in with how they're doing it, um, offering assistance. And if they're stumped, if they're having troubles with it, then you can offer to take over or even just help them by providing a solution. Uh, under the search, you can also refine exactly what PRs you're looking at using the advanced search. Uh, this is a great option if you're looking for helping under a specific product or component. So say I'm going to work on ports and packages and ports framework. I can look at all open tasks working on ports framework. Um, so you can see right here, actually I opened one, but you can see that here's the list of all open tasks for ports framework. The final place that I'm going to bring up that has open tasks is the FreeBSD ideas page. Once again, all these links are provided in chat below. So the FreeBSD ideas page is regularly updated with items for programmers. These are usually more um, expansive or time demanding tasks. And anyone looking to contribute to FreeBSD can check these for any tasks that they want to assist with. As you can see, uh, just by scrolling through, there is a ton of open tasks. So I'm sure that if you go to this page and scroll down, you'll find something that fits uh, your technical expertise and something that you're interested in working on. So uh, I've kind of covered the main places to identify parts of the project that are actively seeking help. The next step is actually working on a patch and submitting that patch. Before you create a patch, um, there's kind of some required reading on how to format your patches. And I'm going to guide you guys to two manual pages that I think are pretty much required reading for these. The first one is the style manual page. Uh, this is the kernel source file style guide. It's very in-depth and gives you a ton of information on how to format your patch. And the second one is intro. And the intro manual page is just an introduction to the system kernel interface. Both of these are really crucial if you are planning on submitting a patch, just having that knowledge. So make sure before you start adding uh, submitting patches to read both of those. Um, it's just going to give you a great 
head start on how to actually format and create your patch. All right. Once you have that patch, um, you've created it, you're using the correct formatting, there's three main ways to submit patches for FreeBSD. So you have Bugzilla, you have Fabricator, and GitHub. Um, we offer some support for GitHub, primarily for people who have um, already familiar with the workflow. And we're going to cover all three today. Um, Ed, would you like to comment on the history of all three programs? Sure. So the project has a long history with Bugzilla. Uh, we migrated to it officially, uh, completing that in 2014. So that's how long Bugzilla has been the official bug tracker and um, used for some patches. Um, around that same time, uh, experiments with Fabricator started uh, and it became official, uh, an officially provided service somewhat later on. Um, so Bugzilla was uh, in operation uh, for, for a couple of uh, years or so before Fabricator was, um, uh, was around in the FreeBSD context. Uh, and then um, there's a large group of people in the open source development community who are already familiar and comfortable with GitHub. So even though we were using Subversion uh, until relatively recently in the project, um, we had a, Git, a GitHub mirror so that folks um, familiar with the GitHub ecosystem could interact with the project. Um, and we, we definitely want to be able to meet those folks where they are effectively, be able to interact with people on GitHub um, who are already familiar with it. Um, but it's, it's not sort of the project's primary um, or preferred interaction uh, point at this point. Uh, the core team um, led by Warner is evaluating changes to workflows and looking at which of the different approaches for interacting with the community and collaborating and reviewing patches and such um, we should uh, consolidate around going forward. Uh, and one of the sort of drivers of this is that as of the beginning of this month, uh, the fabricator uh, upstream community has indicated that it is no longer actively maintained. They basically sunsetted um, ongoing development on fabricator. And so it doesn't, per doesn't mean there's a, an immediate concern for the project, but there's, um, you know, there are very serious open questions about what fabricators future will be. And so uh, over the next mm, several months uh, through the, the remainder of um, of this core team's tenure, uh, we should have a plan for what we intend to do um, and focus on moving forward. Thanks, Drew. All right. So uh, let's talk about the first method of uh, submitting a patch. It's going to be through Bugzilla. I'm going to open up my screen share once again. So we, we actually just previously looked at Bugzilla um, as a source for user submitted problem reports. But in addition to uh, PRs and um, uh, problem reports, you can actually submit patches through Bugzilla. So if you are submitting a smaller, more specific change, you can just submit it directly using the bug submission form. Um, once again, the link will be in chat. Uh, before you are able to submit, there's a few considerations that need to be made. First of all, you need to create an account. When you first go to this page, it's going to ask you to log in. Um, if you don't have an account, uh, there's going to be a link to create an account, and you just need to verify your email. And then you'll be brought to this page. Uh, you're going to want to select the category that your patch falls under, and then fill out the form. So we're going to say base system. Um, we're going to create a fake patch today. So we're going to say this falls under the base system. You're going to need to fill out uh, all of the required um, fields. So under summary, first of all, make sure that you notate that this is a patch by starting with uh, patch. And we're going to call this the FreeBSD Friday. So this is just a quick, uh, specific uh, description of the patch that you have. Uh, next, you're going to fill out the component. So I'm going to say this is ARM and that we're currently running on 13.0 stable. Um, then next under description, you have a little bit more area to describe what the patch is and what problem it fixes. So I'm going to say that this is the FreeBSD Friday patch and it fixes nothing. So this is just a fake patch that I'm creating. 
And then next under attachments, you're going to want to add an attachment and directly link the patch that you've created. Make sure not to copy paste. Um, this is an issue because when you copy or cut and paste, it turns the tabs into spaces, which is going to make the patch completely unusable. Um, and if it's a large patch, you're going to need to compress it before uploading. Uh, write a uh, brief description of your attachment. Um, you can just say, this is the attached patch, and then submit the bug. It's a patch, but you're going to click Submit Bug to submit it. All right, and there's a couple more considerations that need to be made. Um, if you're doing large um, changes to existing source code, you're going to want to make sure that you're using FreeBSD current. So FreeBSD current is an ongoing release of FreeBSD that is specifically for the convenience of developers who are actively working on the system. And this is suggested because if you're working on existing source code and you're using or like an older source, by the time you submit your patch, it might be obsolete. So the best idea is to make sure that you are up to date. Um, you're working on 13.0 current uh, or whatever is current at the time. Um, and then you'll want to produce a set of diffs if you're working on existing source code. I'm going to quickly share my terminal here to show you guys how to make a set of diffs. So this is really easily done um, with the diff command. So what you're going to want to do is diff dash u old file and then specify new file. Um, this is going to have any output because those don't exist on this computer. But if I use an example right here with two text documents I have, you can produce a diff right there. Uh, this generates a set of unified diffs for your given source or director hierarchy. And once you have this set of diffs, you can submit them for inclusion with FreeBSD as a bug report as you previously did in the last step through Bugzilla. Uh, patches might not be addressed immediately, but they remain in the PR database on Bugzilla until it is. And once again, make sure to start off by saying that this is a patch um, and the summary of your report. If your change is potentially sensitive in nature, uh, you might run into some copyright issues in which case it's recommended to send it to core team directly. Uh, you can send it to core team at core at freebsd.org. And this is only recommended if you really know that you're going to run into copyright issues uh, that would govern its further distribution. Don't waste your time or their time if you just are unsure. Make sure that you know it's going to run into a copyright issue. Um, I'm also going to share one last page for you guys. And this is if you are going to share um, a large amount of new code um, or a major value added package, you're going to want to familiar, familiarize yourself with the core team's licensing page. So this is right here on the freebsd.org website. Um, and it really goes into depth on what sort of software licenses FreeBSD prefers. Um, this is a really good idea when you're working with large amounts of code, just because you don't want to run into issues and then have to send it to the core team. All right. And those are the basics of submitting any patches through Bugzilla specifically. And now I'm actually going to turn it over to Ed, who's going to talk about using Fabricator and GitHub if you're going to submit patches. Thanks, Drew. I get my screen share going here. Um, so I'm going to talk, as Drew said, about uh, Fabricator and GitHub, um, starting off with Fabricator. And I'm going to talk a little bit about two different uh, views or types of interaction with Fabricator. Um, I'm focused primarily on using Fabricator as a contributor. Um, because it's a uh, Fabricator is focused on code review, there's a lot of interaction that happens where a contributor uh, submits a change to Fabricator and then FreeBSD committers or others in the community will review and, and have back and forth interaction. Um, so my focus is as a contributor, how you interact with Fabricator, but I'll present um, aspects of, of both sides of the interaction. 
So uh, the first thing to mention is that there's a wiki page that documents uh, the interaction with Fabricator and, and describes all of the steps to use. So the URL is here, wiki.freebsd.org slash Fabricator. And it's fairly well, de uh, uh, well described and, and detailed and straightforward. So um, I'm gonna walk through the process, but uh, it's all clearly documented on this wiki page as well. So the, the first uh, thing to mention is the Fabricator instance um, for FreeBSD is at reviews.freebsd.org, the URL at the bottom of the screen there. And this is the view that you'll see uh, when you first go there without being logged in. Um, I noticed there's a an error message in my screenshot here. Um, Fabricator is uh, often uh, uh, being maintained and updated um, and uh, has occasional um, uh, issues will sh like this will show up. Um, it, it, this is a sort of cosmetic only issue and, and perhaps it affects only uh, the case where people are not logged in. Um, but in any case, uh, up near the top here, there's a login button. So if you already have an account, that's what you'll use, um, but also click on it to create a new account. So when you click on it, there's a login page with username uh, and password field. Um, as well as uh, OAuth based login. So you can use, for example, a Google, um, Google Auth to log into our Fabricator instance. But we'll say here, we're going to use the register new account uh, option and create a new account. And so when we do that, uh, we'll get this create new account page, um, fill in the account details, the name, password and email. And uh, there's a caveat here. Note the, this, this text beside username uh, which says automatically set based on email address. So the way that Fabricator is configured for the FreeBSD project right now, um, the username uh, is basically is derived from the, uh, the email address. It's unchangeable right now. And we know there's some concern with that and we've looked at uh, ways that we might change that. But unfortunately with um, Fabricator's uh, status upstream of, of being no longer maintained. Um, this is likely something that will be addressed when we migrate to a different tool as opposed to being being changed in Fabricator itself. Um, anyway, carry on with uh, filling in a password um, and note this, uh, this specific note up here. Um, because Fabricator receives, uh, the FreeBSD Fabricator receives quite a volume of spam accounts that have no uh, no intention of using it other than to post spam links. Um, we require a separate manually sent email um, to the address described here to confirm that it is a, a legitimate account. Uh, and then uh, down here, uh, click on some traffic lights or bicycles uh, and then click on register account. And then finally, you'll get a uh, confirmation email to verify that your email address is, um, is correct and click on the link in that email and that will activate your account um, or at least uh, your, your account will still be waiting on the, the manual verification of the email uh, that you've sent, which happens within a day or so. Um, it's, it's usually quite quick uh, once you've confirmed that the email is, is, is actually valid in yours. So we'll go back to um, the main screen again here. This is what you'll see when you're logged in. Um, there's a number of different applications uh, under the, the fabricator umbrella, differential diffusion, audit projects, et cetera. Um, differential is what we use for code reviews. And so if we have a change that we want to submit for code review, um, there's the create diff option up here in the right uh, top right corner. Um, and you'll see all of these sections here are empty, but when you have reviews open, uh, you submitted them, you'll see, see your reviews listed in all of these different sections, whether it's waiting on someone else to, re to review your change or it's um, uh, ready for the next step or whatever the case might be. So we'll go up here and click on create diff. And uh, we have a, a box where we can paste in a, uh, a raw version of the, the diff or upload it. As Drew mentioned with Bugzilla, same story here. Don't paste, uh, don't copy and paste a, a, a raw diff into here. Um, you want to upload a file by clicking on this browse link and then selecting it. Um, 
and uh, I'll make a note of this down here, uh, this text box. The best way to create a diff is to use Arcanist command line tool and it says learn more. Um, I'll describe that a little bit later on. Uh, for the, the simple cases, um, it's quite easy to just use the um, uploading a, a raw diff here. Uh, and, and again, th those are described very, um, in very uh, in very good detail on the Fabricator Wiki page, and in particular, um, there's a note in the Fabricator Wiki about creating the diffs with full context. And so, um, have a look at that that note as well. Um, finally, uh, the uh, repository here um, R10 is the FreeBSD source repository. Um, it doesn't matter if you leave this blank; it will still uh, it will still work. Um, but that just is to line up your diff against the, um, the repository that it, it applies against. So after um, clicking on uh, the create diff button, uh, you'll receive another, another form that's asking what you want to attach this diff to. And uh, the default option will be create a new revision. So that's what you would want to do. Um, this shows up because the same uh, workflow can be used if you have an existing review that's open and it needs a new patch. Um, and so if you, if you were updating the patch for an existing review, you can click on the drop down here and pick the review that it should, it should be updating. Um, and then if you scroll down, the rest of the form will show how Fabricator has interpreted or parsed your diff file. And so you can confirm in there that it's the, the correct diff, it's the one you expected, um, and make sure that the content is, is what you want. And then click continue. So then you'll get another page which asks for some metadata about the, the diff. Um, and so uh, it'll ask for the, the title of the, the diff. Basically, this is the same sort of thing that um, the headline in a git commit would be. It's, it's a one line description of the change and it shows up in the various lists that we were looking at before, makes it easy to find this specific diff. And then describe the, the diff in somewhat more uh, detail. Basically, this would generally correspond to what you would have in the commit message and then describe a test plan for how you want to, uh, how you expect to, to test these changes. Um, and then list reviewers, uh, optionally subscribers. Um, reviewers are, are folks that you expect are going to approve or deny the change. Subscribers are uh, in cases where someone is just interested in it. Uh, I'll describe that a little bit more. Um, but if you're not, if it's not clear what should go in there, um, there's uh, a contributor reviews uh, option that I'll, I'll describe in, in just one moment. Um, and you can leave the other uh, visible to and editable by, um, just leave those as the defaults. So the contributor reviews uh, group in Fabricator can be added. And it's basically a set of folks who are, have agreed to monitor incoming submissions and make sure that they get assigned uh, to the right folks for review. So if you don't know what, uh, who should be reviewing your change, um, you can add that as a subscriber. And then um, once the once you, that's um, uh, that's done, you've you've uh, clicked on save changes in the metadata form. Uh, the review is is now in progress, and um, reviewers or the contributor reviews group or whoever's been um, on the subscriber list will be notified and can review the change. Um, so at that at this point, uh, this will be the view that the reviewer will see. So um, all of the changes. Are visible here. Um, you can scroll up and down and, and see the, the full set of the, the changes, and um, we can see one of the one of the changes involved here, um, adding a redirect from dev null um, to this this command here. And so, if the reviewer has a concern or question, they can click on the line number, um, the 162 beside the line they, they want to comment on and add a comment uh, in the, the text box to describe what it is they're concerned about or what they want to see. And then um, clicking on the save draft button will save the comment for the local editing session. You'll see here 
that it says unsubmitted. Um, until the, the review as a whole is submitted, this comment is just basically staying in your, your local draft. And you can go back and edit it again or delete the, the individual comment if you're not ready to, to leave it. So then at the bottom of the, the review form, um, there's a text box where you can add a overall comment. So in the same way as Bugzilla, you, you have a, um, a way to comment just on the, the change in general. The, this box is the same, same sort of um, meaning you can describe or comment or uh, explain what, is your, what your concern is with the review or, or state that you think it's, it's good or, or needs, uh, needs changes. Um, and then you'll also at the bottom see the individual uh, inline comments as well. And then finally, um, the reviewer can click submit to, uh, to save those changes. But also you'll notice um, if we went uh, just, uh, it's just scrolled off the screen here, but um, just above that, that text box, there's this add action box. And so if the reviewer wants to accept the, the review or um, needs to say changes are required um, or such, or wants to, um, a subscriber wants to add other reviewers or, or that sort of thing, um, those actions are set in this, this dropdown. And uh, the, the dropdown options are context sensitive. So uh, depending on the state of the review and your involvement in the review, some of these options may or may not exist. Um, as with the inline comments, those actions are queued up and until you click the submit button, uh, they're just local to your edit. So um, all the comments need to be created, actions need to be set, and then click Submit. And so uh, just to describe ARC very briefly, um, again, this is back to the Fabricator wiki page, uh, and there's step-by-step -step instructions for installing um, ARC, which is, uh, it's, it's Arcanist is the name of the, the tool. ARC is the, the short form, uh, the command line tool that is, uh, is, is used. Uh, this step-by-step this -step instructions here will talk about installing the package and then connecting it uh, to the Fabricator instance. So there's basically a login process that you go through so that the command line tool has your credentials to access the, the Fabricator instance. Um, and then once that's done, you can, uh, you can easily create new reviews directly from the command line. Um, but for for your first change, or you know, if you have only a few small changes, one or two uh, changes that are fairly straightforward, the web interface is quite easy to, to use. So that's, um, that's what I wanted to say about uh, Fabricator. And then we'll talk a little bit about GitHub pull requests as well. So uh, as mentioned a little bit earlier, um, our primary reason for accepting GitHub pull requests is that there are many people who are familiar and comfortable with GitHub already. Um, and we want to effectively meet those people where they are and, and provide an easy, um, easy way to interact with the project for people who have that experience already. So I'm going to give a fairly quick tour of how uh, GitHub can, can work in the FreeBSD context, but I'm not going to go into um, very specific details. There's a lot of really good GitHub guides out there already. Um, so I'm not going to de describe creating forks or creating changes. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the FreeBSD specific aspects of this. If you are a GitHub user already um, and you'd like to submit uh, submit changes to FreeBSD through GitHub, I would definitely make sure you start with some of the existing uh, existing guides describing the, the forking process and, and such. So this is the the URL on the screen here is FreeBSD's uh, GitHub mirror. So this is, now that we've transitioned to Git as the canonical repository source in FreeBSD from Subversion, this uh, Git repo, the contents match exactly what's in our official Git. Um, and it, it just sort of smooths the, it simplifies the process of FreeBSD committers interacting and, and collaborating with people in the, um, in the community on, on GitHub. So on here, I'll click on pull requests uh, to up here, pull requests to see changes that people have submitted to FreeBSD. 
And so here's a list of the pull requests that are open. So the pull requests, uh, each individual pull request basically corresponds to either a Bugzilla entry that has a patch attached to it or um, one of the entries in Fabricator's open differential list. Um, they're all sort of conceptually the same uh, idea. And we'll click on the first one here. This is uh, one of FreeBSD's open pull requests. And so again, um, very similar, we'll see a top level page that is for the change as a whole. And scroll down to the bottom. Again, we have a comment box here where we can um, add a, uh, some sort of uh, information. Our, our, as a reviewer, we can say, you know, this changes um, looks good or ask for more information on part of it um, or whatever it is we, we, need, to, uh, we need to clarify. Um, and now if we go back to the, the main page um, again, um, clicking on the uh, conversation tab at the, the top of the screen, and we'll come back to this view. Uh, sorry, uh, clicking on the commits, um, the commits tab, we'll come to this view. And uh, if we look at um, the, the changes here, similar view as uh, Fabricator, we'll see a line by line comparison of the old and new uh, source code with the changes indicated. And as with Fabricator, we can click on one of the line numbers to leave a comment on a um, specific on a specific entry, uh, specific line in the change if we wanted to ask for more explanation or uh, provide a correction or such. Um, and at the bottom here, we have add a single comment and start a review. Add a single comment is uh, the, for the case where we don't want to actually activate GitHub's code review mechanism. We just want to leave a note about this, this line of the change. Start a review activates GitHub's whole um, uh, code review workflow. Now we'll go back to the, the main page by clicking on the conversation tab. Uh, so this is back to the um the top level list and if you look over here we can see there's a little green check mark um beside the the hash of the change and if we click on that we'll see a, a box open up here that says all checks have passed and um this here is uh Cirrus ci uh, a ci service hosted service that will run on a pull request. And so it's basically telling us that it has a job that builds the world and kernel and then runs it in an emulator to do a boot smoke test and that it has passed, um, that's passed. And if we click on details over here, we'll see um, some more information about the specific uh, test run that was done. And finally at the bottom, we have view more details on Cirrus CI and if we click on that, that'll take us to CRCI's page where we can see the, uh, the test run that was done on Cirrus itself. Um, so it, we can see that it passed in, in about 50 minutes. Um, and if we scroll down, we can see the individual tasks. Um, so it starts by cloning the repository, installs packages, sets up the configuration, and then does the main build. Uh, and the job that's the CI job that's here goes on and builds packages, installs them, and then does a boot uh, boot smoke test. And if you click on the uh, little drop down arrows um, over here, you can see the specific output from the individual tasks. So that's a uh, quick overview of Fabricator and. Uh, and GitHub. And in both of these cases, um, once you've put your, um, you put your review into Fabricator or into GitHub, um, the FreeBSD community will provide feedback and uh, comments and such. And then you can iterate on that feedback uh, from reviewers and committers. Um, and once, once the patch is in a, a committable state, then one of the FreeBSD committers can take it from there and merge it into the FreeBSD tree itself. So that's um, that's all that I have on that topic. I think we'll have a look and see what um, uh, what the questions are from the from the chat. I see one question here. Um, 
one of the uh, question is, what can new contributors do when there are very few people who can or are willing to review a change or act as a mentor? And this is a really good question. Um, and I think um, it's a little bit beyond the scope of what um, we really are gonna cover in this talk. Um, but I will say that uh, it is very much something that is identified, that's been identified as a, a concern um, where we've had uh, either patches in Fabricator or patches in Bugzilla um, or GitHub pull requests that um, have been open for a little while and have not been addressed. Um, and Warner has done a really good job of going through the GitHub pull requests um, of late. And uh, I think at this point where we have uh, five or six open, which are all, are all either quite new, um, quite recent pull requests or are um, long standing issues that are not really ready to be um, to be merged or there, there's more discussion going on. Um, we do have lots of patches in Fabricator and in, in Bugzilla that for various reasons um, have stalled a little bit. Um, and I will say that the this is something that the FreeBSD core team is very actively looking at um, uh, at making sure we can find a, a path forward on. Um, for Fabricator specifically, um, uh, make sure that that uh, contributor reviews base is added as a subscriber to reviews that you have open um, if they're they haven't um, uh, haven't been addressed in a while and then the other comment i'll make is um, don't go overboard with sort of you know uh, bumping or pinging the a, a change that you've got open but if if the review's been open for um, for a while and it hasn't received a response um, then, you know, by all means, be your own advocate and, and, and add a comment to it to kind of bump it up in, um, to, in priority, perhaps, or um, to make it more visible uh, so that it gets noticed again. So maybe, you know, if, if, it's, if it's been a couple of weeks and there's been no comment, um, by all means, add a comment that says, um, you know, is, I haven't seen a comment on this. Is there anything in, um, it's waiting on? Can I, is there anything I can do to, to help find a reviewer? So is that it for questions? Do you think? Uh, that's the only questions I see in the. It's the only question I see in the um, in the chat window right now. Okay. Yep. Great. Well, thank you, Drew and Ed. Um, that was a really interesting talk because it was really interesting seeing all three um, processes for submitting uh, problem reports explained side by side, and. Um, you know, and, and basically what the differences are as well as a uh, history of why uh, there are the three, at least, you know, three different ways of submitting problem reports. So, so that was really helpful. And um, I appreciate that advice too that you gave at the end Ed, for folks who submit problem reports, but then they don't hear anything for a while and what they should do. So, so thank you. Our next FreeBSD Friday will be in July. It's currently not on the schedule yet, and we're looking at changing things up a bit. So just stay tuned for that, and that should be updated. Um, and that it should be updated in the next, uh, maybe I'd say a couple of weeks. So, um, so just keep your eyes on our social media as well as that, the FreeBSD Fridays page. And I think that's it. So thank you, everyone.